Hey everyone, I've been working on this idea of creating printed circuits with my vacuum deposition chamber and this weekend I finally finished in making the first uh, successful active circuit. So you can see it here, it's a two LED flasher and for some reason after I took it out of the curing oven to cure the epoxy the flash rate is really fast now. I'm not sure if you can see that with the uh, camera frame rate. Uh, but as you can see before I put it in the oven it was flashing at sort of a more noticeable rate here. So let me tell you how I did it. I started with a vinyl cutter. And this is a pretty interesting tool that has all kinds of different uses, but is mostly sold to craftspeople to cut out uh, paper and other, you know, uh, scrapbooking type materials. But in my case, I uh, exported an image from a PCB layout tool called Eagle and imported the image into the vinyl cutter software and then cut out some black vinyl in the shape of a, of a foil pattern for a circuit board. I spent quite a bit of time trying to get a vector image format to go from Eagle into the uh, vinyl cutter software, but despite hours of trying it never really worked, and so the easiest thing I found is just to export a high resolution image, a PNG file, and use that as the transfer medium. And then in the vinyl cutter software just trace that image out, and uh, that seems to work fine for, uh, I, I think that would be fine even down to 400 micron pitch stuff. I then removed the unwanted pieces from the cut vinyl just using a pair of tweezers. And uh, then the real magic of this whole vinyl cutting process is the use of the transfer uh, paper, or the transfer sticker. So the transfer paper has a very low tack adhesive on it that lets me pull off the cut vinyl and keep it all in registration with itself and then de deposit it onto a substrate. And in this case, I'm going to be using some clear transparency sheets, uh, laser printer transparency sheets. I then double stick the transparency sheet onto an aluminum backing plate. And the point of this is just to keep it flat and also to keep it from overheating when I put it in the vacuum chamber. I'm going to be exposing this to some very high intensity radiant heat. And if there were no backing plate, the plastic would get very hot and warp. The vacuum chamber is set up so that the thing that I want to coat with metal is at the top of the chamber facing down and the metal that I'm going to evaporate is at the bottom of the chamber facing up. And so when I turn the power on uh, after pulling a vacuum in the chamber I can evaporate the metal, in this case aluminum, and the evaporated aluminum travels upward and deposits onto the substrate, which is the clear plastic transparency in this case. I've also got my crystal thickness monitor system working uh, thanks to the help of a, a very generous viewer and um, I can monitor the thickness of aluminum uh, as it's being deposited. I've made quite a few attempts at doing this before and you can see some of the different uh, combinations of stuff that I have here. So we've got aluminum on paper, aluminum on ABS plastic. This was aluminum on printer transparency but this is one that I did without the the metal backing plate and what happened is, is it just overheated the vinyl and basically just burned the vinyl right into the transparency. I couldn't even peel it off. So then I figured out uh, to use the backing plate and made this one. And this is the circuit from today in aluminum. Uh, I can also do aluminum on glass, which looks nice, but the adhesion of the aluminum onto the glass is not very good. Uh, this was a contaminated sample that was supposed to be aluminum but ended up being something else. And what I settled on was actually doing copper. So copper on glass works pretty well. This one I was even able to solder to if I was really careful. If I was very very quick with the iron I could actually solder to the copper that was deposited onto the glass here. I've also deposited copper onto transparency and this is what I used today. So what ended up working for me was the copper on the clear transparency. The aluminum, I was having too much of a trouble with uh, getting a low enough resistance. So the thickness of aluminum on here is probably in the um, uh, 1 to 300 nanometer range. And that's very, very thin. In fact, it's so thin that the resistance of the layer is high enough to be a problem, even in a, even in a circuit like this. So after the metal has been deposited, I take the sample out of the chamber and then peel off the vinyl, leaving just the traces where I want them on the substrate. These printer transparencies are not able to withstand soldering temperatures, 
So I'm going to use a conductive epoxy glue to hold down the components onto the, onto the printed circuit. And fortunately enough, all of this ended up working out just fine, and I had a, a working circuit at the end of the day. So you might be thinking, well, this isn't actually all that great, because commercially we can do this on Kapton, and it's even able to be reflowed, and uh, it's thinner, and the copper layer is thicker, and it can be you know, chemically etched and all that. However, what I'm really interested in doing here is making the um, inputs and outputs of the circuit integrated into the stuff that I'm uh, depositing with the vacuum chamber. So instead of gluing down surface mount components, what I really want to do is make thin film transistors and OLEDs in the plastic so that the entire circuit is actually integrated or at least deposited onto the substrate. Uh, then we can actually have some really interesting stuff going on that cuts down the assembly time and also hopefully will make it flexible. So just for kicks, since we're a camera now, we're, you know, we're filming this now, I wanted to flex this and figure out just how flexible it actually is. So I'm going to flex it to breakage here, if I can. And it looks like what happens is if I flex it, the glue breaks, and then it'll actually reconnect if I flex it the other way. So it's really not that flexible. It would be nice to make a, um, a clear, flexible sort of sticker circuit that was Oh, there we just lost the uh, component there. So it's definitely coming apart. And my goal here is to have a much more flexible, durable circuit. Okay, well let me know if you have any suggestions of uh, what I should build next, or substrate ideas, or anything like that. Okay, see you next time. Bye.